What's up guys? We are about 10 minutes away from Top Shelf. It is about 7.50 in the morning and uh, we landed at about 12.30 last night. So we're really tired at 6.50 actually in Dallas. So we lost an hour coming over to the East Coast, but I'm kind of nervous. I haven't worked for these guys before. Kevin, one of the owners is, I mean, he's a stickler and I think Steven is excited to be creative on what he's gonna make me do today. So, slightly nervous. Uh, first time I've been nervous coming to work at a fish store before. I've done it for, oh, I worked at Dallas North Turn Aquarium. Turn left onto West Fairbanks Avenue. For about eight years. So, this shouldn't be scary, but it, but it kinda is. All right, guys. We are at the Top Shelf Farm. So the Top Shelf Retail Store is that way. And the Top Shelf Farm is this way. We're headed there now, and um, Kevin is just gonna be waiting for us. I know he's a stickler for time, too. And we're five minutes late. Now more like seven or eight, because we parked at the retail store. We're here at Top Shelf. I think Kevin's inside waiting on us. He is, uh, we let him know that we got here. Here he is. Oh man, you're late. <laughs> I hope Already. you're ready to work. We got a lot to get I going. I told you today, that's man. what he was going to say. Let's get rocking. <laughs> okay, let's get going. All right, so this is just the farm, and it almost looks like some of the retail stores that we've been in, guys. So, Top Shelf is a serious business. These guys have been doing it for a very long time, and we get to work here today. You're kind of familiar with the facility. I mean, the online crew runs most of the stuff over here, dealing with customer service, photography, editing, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. Packing crew's already getting started here. We just had a, uh, a big sale, so they got a lot of product going out today. Um, obviously, with these systems, there's a ton of coral here to look after every day. So a big part of what we do in the mornings is, you know, you can see Daniel here. He's kind of running through, looking over every up, inch Daniel? of the tanks making sure all the coral's healthy, nothing's shifted or got stung. Um, noticing any problems if there were like, you know, a little bit of algae or something we gotta take care of, throw some cleaner crew in there. Um, you know, doing maintenance on the systems, like your regular home aquarium. Except on a much bigger scale, we have refugiums, skimmers, socks, all that kind of stuff that has to be maintained regularly. Wow, guys, this is a bit overwhelming. There is coral everywhere. And this isn't just regular coral. This is very, very expensive top shelf coral. Um, really, there's not a better word for that than top shelf because this is the, the top stuff that you're gonna see in the industry. There's pieces here that are like maybe this big that might go for $500, $1,000. And you don't wanna mess that up. Guys, now I know where the nervousness was coming from in my belly this morning. It wasn't that we were a couple minutes late. It was really more, I come from an aquarium store where they didn't have coral this serious. And today I knew I was going into Top Shop Aquatics, which this is so much more serious in coral than I've ever been a part of. So that, just that feeling right there of knowing I'm a bit out of my normal realm has uh, made me a bit uneasy this morning. And you know, the simplest thing of a coral falling down and getting stung and somebody not noticing that with all our daily inspections, it could set our company back years of growth. So, you know, it's just something that, yeah, you do have to have people who really take the job serious and, and care, you know, people who really love the animals and, and want to put in that extra effort, not just kind of go through the motions. And, you know, that's the type of uh, employee that thrives here in the aquaculture side. So we look for all sorts of backgrounds and, uh, you know, we have a pretty diverse crew, which you'll probably meet the guys here soon. I hear that Blaine's off today, right? Because it was the one day that he had no, asked off. No, no, he had actually, um, he was off yesterday. So he's back. He's back today. So okay. King Fragger's here. So you get to, uh, you know, hang out. You guys are going to get to meet Blaine today. Yep. He is, uh, he's always got so much excitement. He's, uh, he's a real joy to be around. I'm excited to work with Blaine today. So, awesome, awesome. This place is definitely massive. And I'm actually, I've been here before. And this might be the first time I've looked at it with the eyes that I actually actually contribute here. And that's why it's so overwhelming for me today. All right, guys, Kevin has grabbed me a shirt because I have to wear the official Top Shelf gear. I've already noticed right away that it's not the same color as every single oh, yes. other one. All right, well, I'm gonna hope 
because I want a blue one like everyone else. So this is really disappointing for me. But I'm gonna put it on, I'm gonna wear it with pride. And hopefully by the end of the day, I've earned myself a black top shelf shirt. So I'll be back. All right guys, I have my official trainee shirt on and they've handed me over to Blaine because Blaine is gonna give me my first duties to get this thing started. What's going on, Sean? Welcome right. to your first day at Top Show, brother. <laughs> okay, let's I'm part of the team. All right. Part of the squad. All right, let's kind of get you started on our daily rundown. So first day at Top Shelf, um, we're gonna consider you as a new, not knowing much about the hobby, maybe even have a little bit of knowledge, but you know, pretty much anywhere you work, you're gonna start from the bottom and work your way up. Okay. So we're gonna start with the dirty stuff first. We're gonna hit some skimmers and some socks, everybody's favorite. Okay, skimmers and socks. I know what that means. That's a really dirty job, but somebody's gotta do it. So a big thing that we pride ourselves on at Top Shelf is our test team. Um, we're constantly testing the water. Um, so when skimmers and socks come around, we're kind of dictating that based on our nutrient export. Yep. Um, so every day we come in, you see you've got a quite dirty skimmer. It's pulling some really nasty junk. So we're just gonna remove that from the cup off the top, let that little bit drain out. And we're gonna walk this over to the sink. You can always tell it's skimmer morning by the smell of the farm. So Sean, basically you're gonna put this in the sink and we're gonna do a nice little hose down. You're gonna spray everything off. We're gonna try to get off all this nasty gunk that's chopped up on these skimmers. We want them as clean as possible. That way, when they're doing their afternoon testing, our nutrient levels are where we want. We're typically looking for our phosphates between 0 0.06 to like 0 0.1. Um, so obviously we're very, very strict about what our numbers are. And by doing that, it keeps our corals nice, happy, and healthy. You're gonna literally give it a nice, good clean, you're gonna get a little dirty. You're gonna have to maybe use your hands a little bit. Come in here and wipe some of that gunk off. We want this baby looking brand new by the time we get done. Slap that bad boy back on, and we're gonna take it right back to the tank. So when we put this back on the tank, one thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come back and check this about every five to 10 minutes. Um, basically looking at how we're skimming. Do we wanna run a little bit more wet, a little bit more dry, depending on our nutrient level for the day. So my tester guys will come out and let me know where our nutrients are at that morning, and that'll kind of dictate where we're gonna run the skimmer at for the day. But let's bring you over here and we'll let you run one. All right. My goal is to clean the skimmer cup better than Blaine right away. Oh man, you're trying to take my job already, mm -hmm. Sean. Don't do me like that, man. Oh no, just this job. I can't. can't you imagine. can honestly have the skimmer. That's you're not the job. Become the expert cleaner. <laughs> of the take a look at that bad boy. It looks nice like a nice clean. clean skimmer. Yeah. All right. I'll give that a solid uh, B plus. B plus. Hey, we're gonna start somewhere. You need me to slide in there? Do you think no. you got it? I got it. There we go. We'll come back and check that in just a little while, make sure that we're Make sure that we didn't it. bump any dials. Correct. So once again, every morning, our testers are kind of let us know what systems we're gonna need to, to give Nori to. Um, yeah. This morning we have Belafonte, which is this large system here. Yeah. And then we have SB on our back wall. So we're gonna go over here and grab some Nori and I'll let you feed some of our awesome things. So this is our Nori sheets. Um, typically what we'll do is I'll give you a sheet and I'll take a sheet. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna break this into threes. So what I like to do is I do the first like two and a half and I'll just fold it like paper. And then I basically just rip that off. Obviously it doesn't have to be perfect, but that's where we're shooting for. Oh. It's okay. <laughs> my, my piece doesn't look good either. And then we'll just take this one, fold it in half. Tangs are of importance in two ways. So they do a good nutrient import for us. And they also, obviously like a maintenance fish, they're gonna take care of a lot of nuisance algae or anything we're running to in the tanks. So if you wanna grab you a handful of those, Sean, we'll, I'll grab this one and we'll work over there together. Just gonna pull your algae clip. What I do is I just fold one of these in half, pull the algae clip off, pinch it, and then drop it right back in the tank. And as you can see, a lot of our guys are curious. They're ready to come eat. Um, we have a lot of smaller fish in this tank, so they won't be as hungry, but some of these big beasts we have in the other parts of Belafonte will really go in that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> You'll notice that yeah, a lot of our bigger fish that have been here for a while are well versed <laughs> in the training. So they're gonna come in hot anytime they see you getting close to the tank. Oh, <laughs> And there goes the clip. Let's go ahead and reload that one because he will literally out starve the rest of the crew. I got you right here. Vlad! Okay, we got a little bit of time on that one. Vlad has his first algae clip. I've named him Vlad because he's a flamingo tank. You know how big the fish are when they yank around the algae clips. He took my hand off. All 
right, Sean, uh, help me out with my morning duties. I'm gonna have you run over to shipping and then I'm gonna get back on inspections and then hit some frag in here in a little bit. All right. Thanks for your time, man. Let's go, thanks. Yep. No doubt, brother. Appreciate it. All right, guys. This is Steven Bays, one of the other guys I here at Top Shelf Aquatics. Steven, I'm done with the skimmers okay. and socks, so they've sent me to you now. Oh boy. What do you want me to do uh, next? I'm probably gonna fire you, but come on, let me, uh, <laughs> let's, let's, go, oh, uh, let's go do some packing. Uh, we, so we, we have about 400 corals today to pack, so um, I think you're gonna have a, a pretty busy day here. So um, yeah, so this is the packing station. I don't know if you guys have already seen it. So uh, I'll find Christian, which is our, our packing manager, uh, to kind of show you the ropes. But uh, yeah, you're gonna be pulling out these orders for all of our customers, looking at the corals, inspecting the corals, getting them all packed up, labeled, all that good fun stuff. So, hey Christian, this is our packing manager. Uh, so you're gonna have fun uh, packing corals with uh, Christian. Out. So right. this is our packing station. Yep. This is sort of where we ship everything out, sort of where we get everything ready, everybody's orders. So right over here, we've actually got our pile of orders for the day. So we just had our Halloween sale last night. So we actually had a pretty big day. We've got about 400 pieces going out, about 46, about 50 orders, probably by the end of the day once everything comes in. So the way we pull everything is, we'll start by just grabbing one off the stack here. And the way we do it is, we have a copy up front that's sort of an itemized invoice for them. You can sort of see it there. And then on the back end, we've got our invoice. It's got all of our SKUs and all the information we need to pull everything. So here, for example, you can see it says two almost Superman Monty, almost what you see is what you get. So we know, okay, that's one of our standard inventory frags. It's supposed to be a nice filled out Superman Monty. Right here, for example, we've got TSA Chili Pepper Monty, but it says BF.U1. So if we go over here, so what those tell us is we know it's Belafonte and we know it's in the SKU section you want. So we'll go right over here. Now this whole section right here is Belafonte. And we know, okay, this is our zone right here. So we'll just go BFU1. So it's actually that front one right there for you. Wow, and this is the exact one that was imaged. The exact corolla on they this shot. picture. And they bought what you see is what you get. That's when you see that nice WYSIWYG right there. What you see is what you get. And you've actually got the row U and, and slot one. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this in the collection cup. Yep. And then I'm gonna fill this with water and put it down in there, correct? Got it. All right. And actually you can see it's grown quite a bit since it's just yeah, been sitting it, there. It was almost encrusted onto that um, rack there. Wow, that keeps it in place. Yep. And then you just go ahead and bag this underwater, huh? Yeah, it helps keep the corals from tumbling around, getting their skin irritated by the plastic, rolling around during shipping and everything. Helps make sure they make it all there in one piece. That's great. A nice little trick. So what you want to do when you're bagging these guys up is you want to pinch it right here in the middle, give it a couple twists. So you want to come in like this, just like that. Whoa. Make sure you keep the fingers out of the way. Okay. Perfect. Dude, that was wicked. <laughs> My first bag, top shelf coral. And once the finished product's all done, ends up looking a little something like this. So this guy, for example, has a couple mystery zoas. We'll write it on there so they know what they're getting at the end of the day when they all show up. Nice. So I'm gonna hand you off to Bubba now. All right, so let's go take some pictures. All right, let's get it done. This is like one of the clear tubes from Building Obsession. Pretty much, you let you stick uh, it in the water. Yeah. Yeah. Take good pictures. So pretty much what we normally do, like this area here, we laid out some new corals. You can kind of see in the blacked out zone, you clean it off, lay some new corals out, let them open up quite a bit. And that's pretty it, and we'll just kind of snap away. we we'll kind of just go one by one. All right, so the button is way right here. Push it in halfway, it'll kind of focus, and then you push it all the way and it'll snap. Okay. That's it. Do any more? Yeah, whatever you want to do. Okay. Oh, look at this bad boy, Max. Yeah, what it's is got some of the grafted piece in it. What is this one? That's like our mega chrome. It's got that nice grafted uh, green spot in there. The mega chrome? Mega chrome. I'm taking a photo of the mega chrome. Sweet. <laughs> I took a photo for the website. So many steps to what they do here at Top Shelf. This is absolutely mind blowing. Like from everything to simple maintenance, cutting coral, bagging coral, now taking photography of coral. This is insane. All right guys, we're here with Taras. He's gonna show us what they're doing at Top Shelf with copepods and phytoplankton. How's it going? My name is Taras. My job uh, pretty much here is to uh, deal with the live feed organisms that we grow at TSA. 
Um, so my favorite thing about live feeds, be it from phytoplankton all the way to copepods and rotifers, is that uh, they really are bringing the hobby more and more towards replicating the highly complex, highly nuanced, and highly powerful ecological ways that real wild ecosystems function. So by bringing more and more of these microscopic critters into our tank to act as you know, vehicles for nutrition, micro cleanup crew, and direct feeds, we're really getting closer to making our tanks be closer and closer to that slice of incomprehensible natural beauty. So right here is my little rudimentary coke pod rack. Um, we have three species of copepods currently. Uh, at the top, we have uh, uh, cyclopoid copepod, Apocyclops panamensis. So this is more of an open water copepod that kind of peps around and is much more available to filter feeding organisms that are eating things in the water column. But it's also very good at eating things in the water column, so it's a good micro cleanup crew for ciliates and stray algaes and like. And our bottom two copepods are herpactoids. So these are um, arguably what I would consider the most useful and widely applicable to both the novice and advanced reef aquarists. So our pactoid coke pods like these Tisbe vinamiensis and these Tigriopus californicus down here, these are defined by crawling across substrates and what they love is eating schmutz, detritus, bacteria, dead cells, and they go inside the areas of the reef that have the most schmutz, those microscopic little crevices and they eat all that schmutz and they reproduce rapidly. And then the second there's too many of them in there in that sweet spot that they like, they start discharging babies and adults. And then, in my opinion, that's the most beautiful way we can have a fully functional reef ecosystem where we have our live rock attracting all of our detritus and waste, coke pods eating it, reducing it, and then a surplus of critters being released to be fed upon by everything from our mandarin dragonettes and our seahorses, all the way up to our aphotosynthetic corals, our sun corals, gorgonians, etc. So a lot of what I do is uh, raising these critters and making them available to um, people to uh, purchase at the store and online. All right, looks like you graduated here from the farm. We're gonna walk on over to the retail store and I'm gonna let Alex have you over there, see what he's got for you. All right.